Okay, we're going to explore some of the 2D vector drawing suite tools and the 3D pattern modeling suite tools in this project uh, where we're going to actually create a, a pattern from a photo. So we're going to go start with file, go to import, import tracing image. From file, I'll select uh, photo. This is just a photo I downloaded from the internet of this jet plane. And you can move these yellow bars around to crop the image in if you want to. And kind of give it, you know, the exact image you want. I'm going to go ahead and just pull it in at the full size that it is. But I'm going to change the scale down here. The largest you can bring something in, the largest dimension is 14. So anytime I'm tracing, I always bring it in as large as I can. The smallest that it'll let you bring it in is that the smallest dimension will be six inches so uh, but I always try to go as large as I can to get the highest quality pattern out of the uh, out of the photos I can so hit OK and it shows up here on the board okay we will zoom in and we will begin tracing so I'm gonna grab my smart spline tool which is part of the new vector drawing tools set and I will start tracing around this. So I put one point down and I'm going to put another point down and when I hold down the mouse and pull out, I pull these handlebars out that allow me to put a curve on that line. So now when I put my next point down, you'll notice that it continued that line. So these handlebars there are, are linked together and it makes that line continue that spline curve that was already there. So we don't want to do that so I will undo that last vertex and I'll click here or I'll hover over this purple point and you notice it has a little T there in a purple color. This means it's tangent which means it's that locking between the two points. They will flow into each other and whenever you control one point it will affect the other. If I click on that dot while I'm drawing and turn it red, it frees it up. So then the next point I put down won't follow that curve. And you'll notice now it's just a straight line and no curve because I didn't pull out the handlebar. So let's undo that again. And this time when I put it down, I'll hold down the mouse button and pull out the handlebar so I can make it a curve. Now when I put my next point down, I'm just going to place it down at the bottom of this curve and it automatically, because it's tangent, it automatically followed that curve around. So now that this is red, it means it is free, so I can, I'm free to put my next point down, and I want to just isolate just out this, this fuselage here, because when we're modeling out things, we want to break it up into parts, rather than trying to model out one large thing which we won't ever be able to get our depths or our foreground, middle ground, background effects on something like this. So we'll just continue tracing this around. Alright, so this uh, element here, we want to tweak it. And it's tangent so it's affecting both of these curves and, and uh, if you look here it's actually making this curve come around rather than it being pointy the way we want it. So if I right click there, I can go and change it to free, which makes it so now I can control those points separately and give it a nice sharp point. Okay, and then just kind of tweak the, the design, the tracing so that it follows your shape as closely as you can get it. And with these, with these simple tools, it makes it real easy to do that. Okay, so now we've got that, that element of it traced. We can rotate the board and look at that there. Now the next step here, whenever I'm actually modeling patterns, there's a couple things that I do when I initially set up my project. One of them is I draw a carved region. I'll actually size this so that it goes off of the board this with this rectangle make it a carved region 
and I'm going to set the depth to 0.5. Now, I'm setting this depth to be the base level for the pattern that I'm going to be modeling here. So this is the depth of the pattern that I'm going to make. Now usually when I'm doing a traced image as large as I imported it, I'm going to do it at a half an inch. If I'm doing a small pattern or something, then I may only set it to be a quarter inch or, or whatever is appropriate for what I'm doing. But whenever I'm modeling or tracing out something large, I try to go at least a half an inch. Okay, all right. Now one other thing we want to look at, we want to set here, You'll notice that you know the, our outline, which we had matched up really closely a little bit ago, is now not quite matching up. Now what's happening is in Designer there is a default perspective view on the board so that it actually makes things smaller when they're further away. So now that we have this half inch of depth there, we're seeing the effect of this perspective, which makes our outlines not match up. So if I go up to my view menu, I can go and turn that perspective off, toggle perspective off. And now my outlines are showing where they should be, tracing around the image that I had created. Okay, so now that we've got our settings, our carve region to set our base level of our pattern and our perspective view off, we can continue with this, this uh, pattern. All right, so we've got this shape drawn, and we want to kind of pop that element of this airplane out. So let's use our puffing tools. Select puffing. Since this is round, we're going to go with a bubble puff. And I'm actually, instead of 0.5, I'm going to just set it just right above 0.5 or 0.49. And I'm going to increase the steepness of my curve. So this either makes it really shallow bump or puff or bubble or a steep bubble. I'm going to set it steep, hit OK, and let that render. OK, now it's on there and we turn the board to the side. We can see it coming, puffing and bubbling out of the board there. Gives us a nice round shape, very, very jet airplane looking toggle off our texture and we actually just look at that shape by itself. Okay, let's snap that back to the front, turn our tracing image back on, and let's draw some more of these elements. Alright, we've got this here. Got a curve there. It kind of curves out again this way. Let's just kind of follow what you see on the board. This here uh, goes underneath the wing is part of the engine there. We can't see all of what's going on behind there, but we know kind of generally what the shape is looking like. So, you know, some of these elements are going to be hidden with things that we put on top, like this wing structure. So, we don't have to be super precise in in uh, what every piece of this thing looks like that you know as far as the parts that we can't see okay so we got that traced out tweak it a little bit to get you where you what you want it and let's go and add a, a puff to this one let's do a curve on this one a half inch and uh, let's just set the angle really low just to see what it looks like okay if you set it too low it'll just disappear so let's set it normal size there okay so there it is all right, so now let's do a little bit of tweaking. This one needs to be back behind a little bit. And this one needs to be up in the front. So let's increase that bevel and get it up in the front there. 
Okay, well, let's tweak this a little bit. So that it's following our curve a little bit better. Alright, well that looks pretty good. Sometimes you, you've got to visually tweak and oversize it since it's going to be merging in with the other there. That's why it's good to toggle back and forth. And see if you're getting it looking like it's supposed to. Let's straighten that curve out a little bit. Yeah, it's looking much better. Following that shape quite a bit better. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw in this wing. My smart spline tool again. Draw in the wing of this plane. Sometimes I will pull in the wing or elements like this and make them overlap so when you apply effects to them they'll, they'll merge in better. So this is fairly flat so we'll pick a flat puff on this one and we'll set the angle to be all the way up so that it's nice steep flat looking piece. Let's toggle this off and look at that. Alright. Not too bad. Let's take this now and use our tilting tool to tilt that wing out so it resembles more like what what we'd see in, in real life. You know, that wing is coming out, so this point's gonna be higher. So we can kind of create the illusion of that effect here. With our tilting tool. And let's toggle that off and see that. Okay, maybe we need to decrease the height on this one so that we get a little bit of better merging. And maybe we need to increase or put less of a depth on this one. So do a little bit of pushing and pulling between the uh, heights and depths here and we can pull out that shape and have it resemble, look like it's actually coming out of the other piece there. Okay, that's a little smoother transition. We'll work with that. All right, well, let's continue tracing around this. There's the same shape on the other side here. Let's zoom in. Okay, and let's add our puff to that. We'll try the bubble puff again on there. Okay, so that one's way too high. Reduce that back. So let's 
Maybe adjust this a little bit. Just start adjusting heights. So this one we'll push way back. Set it about 10, maybe this one about 20. We can probably put an angle on this one. So we want it to angle back the other way. It's going disappearing off into the distance there. We can do the same with this one. This one we'll want to angle forward. This one we'll angle that one back there. This one we'll angle back disappearing as well. Okay. Alright, now we can adjust the heights of everything. Now this one, we still need to push that one back. Oh, maybe 20 will work on that one. Maybe 10 is more appropriate. This one, push that back to 10. This one, we need to bring it out more, so let's increase its, or uh, lessen its depth. To, there. That one looks pretty good. So, you know, very quickly here, by just drawing in these shapes, we've got a pretty good version of our plane. Okay. So we can continue drawing in more details if we want to. Uh, but one other thing that I'll show here that makes a big difference in doing things like this is let's import an image file and let's go get the same photo that we did there and hit finish call it F18 jet I already brought that in once so let's go to our favorites grab the F18 jet let's put it on the board Remember we sized it to be 14 inches, so let's size this to be the same. Let's center it on the board. Let's set the depth to be a half inch like we did everything else. Let's reduce the height to about 10 so it's not so aggressively textured. Let's right click and let's do a merge subtractive on this. What we get, maybe let's increase that height up to 20, is the details of that photo now merging with the pattern we made. So from there you can do a little bit of tweaking if you need to. 
to get the design to line up just right. But very quickly, we have created our own version of this jet plane, which we can go in and keep adding more and more details and model this thing out to be get it as detailed as we can as we can get it and uh, make it into a pattern.